You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today, April 13th to 2022, we are discussing the Houston Texans in my On the Clock Draft Preview Series, where I'll be going over some players that I would like to see the Texans go after in this year's draft. So, my Texans fans... Comment down below. Let me know who you want to see the team go after in this year's draft. And then, of course, if you agree with my picks here, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as I'm going through all the teams in the NFL. Or at least I've come to the realization that there probably are going to be like a two or three teams I may potentially skip over because they only have a handful. Like the Rams don't really have much draft capital in this year's draft. So without getting into a whole spiel, I'm doing the majority of the NFL. So Let's dive into the Houston Texans. Now, the Texans, for those of you that are Texans fans, if you do not know me, um, I am a Colts fan. Uh, and, and I say that term loosely because I am more of an NFL fan first than a Colts fan second. I love all things football. I love all things the NFL. I love all things the USFL, and we cover that, so make sure you check that stuff out too. So what I'm doing now here today is a little bit different than how I've done this series. Typically, I do a first-round pick, then a day two pick, and then like a day three pick. Now, the Texans, though, uh, as I was going through their draft picks and everything and kind of looking at the team, there's obviously a handful of holes that need filling. And with two first round picks and a second round pick, I I could not really pass up the opportunity to really just dive into some of those top end pieces that will be ultimately more than likely day one starters and and you're hoping if you're taking people in the first round and the second round they're playing for you hopefully day one and I could not pass up that opportunity so I decided rather than doing the typical day three two and one pick I would focus on pick number three pick number 13 and pick number 37 because that pick is almost a first round pick anyways so I didn't want to pass this up I had a lot of fun putting this one together and we'll start with the lowest of the three round two pick number 37 and who I have highlighted for you guys here a little bit of a a, a a value-ish selection a guy who I think could turn out to be really effective is edge rusher Arnold Ebiketti out of Penn State this is a guy who while he isn't the most physical specimen he technically is one of and I, and I when I say technically I mean in terms of just like his technical ability is leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of edge rushers in this draft class he plays like a veteran but he again he's not the most physically imposing guy he's 6'2 250 yes good size but there's nothing about him when you look at him physically that screams wow and what I've read for the majority of the scouting reports on him was as if he had the, the like physical wow factor to him as well. He would probably be a first round lock. Now, technique is something that it takes time to really mold and put together. And while not having the physical traits is something that it, either you do or you don't at the end of the day when you start to get to this level, he can still add to it a little bit more. But the fact that he's so technically sound and ready to roll, this is an excellent guy to bring in. And you could throw him right into the starting fold on the edge and you start to get production immediately. He had a 22.9% pass rush win rate this past season, 18 tackles for loss and nine and a half sacks. So it's clear that he is able to get after the quarterback and he's able to do it in a number of different ways. He's praised for being somebody who can find different ways to win coming off of the edge. And his real biggest knock is, again, like I said, the phys- the physical spec- the physical size of him per se, and also the fact that he didn't really play a full season until his fifth year so that is something that is a little bit of a concern but just with the way he plays and the style he plays and and the term kept coming up he plays like a veteran he's 23 years old so you're hoping that someone at this age is 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 closer to being ready to go than someone that's coming out at like 21 he's a good guy to bring in uh the texans pass rush last year not the best not the worst, but not the best. Uh, and realistically speaking, you want guys that you can plug in and expect to get immediate results from. And a lot of people feel that he is a guy that you can plug in and you can start getting to go after the quarterback and forcing pressures and, you know, potentially bad plays by the QB or even bringing the QB down. And again, the nine and a half sack shows he has the ability to get after the QB and he played some pretty solid teams last year. So overall, I like the pick. I think it would be a good guy to bring in for round number two at that pick 37 spot. But the first round selections. I did focus on offense and on defense for both picks. 
Um, I was trying to find essentially a like stalwart type player that you could put on the offense and one that you could put on the defense. And for the round one pick number 13 selection here, I did a Ravens draft preview a handful of weeks ago, and I actually brought this guy up for the Ravens. However, the Texans pick a couple, like two or three selections, I think, or maybe it's even one selection before them. I can't remember exactly if he's available and this is me going off the idea of that the Texans truly believe in Davis Mills, who I was high on coming out of last year's draft Texans fans. I'll tell you this right now. I pegged him as a successor for the Steelers after Ben Roethlisberger was gone. And unfortunately Steelers didn't get him. So now they're looking for a QB of the future and Texans fans. I've seen some of the praise you guys give to him and I've seen what Davis Mills can do. I'm very impressed with him so far. I would hope that the Texans try to roll with him and just try to add more pieces around him. So with that in mind, if you have your quarterback on the offense, let's target our quarterback on the defense and get a guy like linebacker Devin Lloyd out of Utah. He is the all-around premier linebacker in this year's draft class. The guy is a excellent 6'3", 235 pound sized guy who can cover tight ends. He can stop the run. He can get after the quarterback. He can literally do everything you need. I mean, his versatility is unmatched in this year's draft class. He is the guy at linebacker and he has excellent situational awareness. He won't be, you know, he doesn't get beat by fakes and things like that. He is an excellent tackler. He does everything really, really well. And Honestly, the biggest knocks to him are funny enough just because of how aggressive he is. He does have a tendency to miss a tackle here and there, but it's because of how aggressive he is in going after those tackles that he just doesn't get clean wrap-ups. Like, that's that's just coaching. That's something that's really easy to kind of get over. Like, he had a 12.5% career miss rate, but it's that's something that with good coaching, you can kind of solve and figure out. Couple that with... The only other real knock to his game is that he's not like the superstar athlete type of linebacker we're getting these days in the NFL, but those athletic like NFL linebackers we're starting to see now, like the Darius Leonard's and the Fred Warner's are not the size of him at 6'3", 235. They're more along the lines of like 6'1", 6'2", hovering around that 220 pound range. And Darius Leonard even talked about that, that he plays somewhere around that weight too. So like Devin Lloyd's a bigger guy, but he's someone that's not going to get beat up by the tight ends that are going over the middle, running those seam routes and playing on the inside there. He's also solid in coverage while he's not, again, he's not like the world's fastest linebacker by any means. He has enough athleticism that even though there is some concern about it, he plays a slightly different style of linebacker. He's not just the drop back coverage linebacker. He is also a run stopping thumper, you know, like he is, he can do it all. And that comes because of the size that he has. I love Devin Lloyd at 13. If you guys can get him and he's still available, draft them, get your quarterback on the defense. You have what I assume is a quarterback on the offense, at least for now. We'll see if that's really the case. The Texans sound like they're kind of all in on Davis mills right now. And he had some really good games. I like what Davis Mills brings to the table. He's a Stanford guy. I'm a Colts fan. I loved Andrew Luck from Stanford. I like the tape that I saw from Davis Mills coming out of last year's draft class. And I think that he could, with some good talent around him, be a serviceable QB at, at worst, at worst. And who knows how far he could actually take his ability. Now, for pick number three, we address the quarterback on the defensive side of the football there with linebacker Devin Lloyd. Again, I'm going off the assumption that the Texans are going to stick with their word and build around their quarterback in Davis Mills. Who do you go after at number three? Do you take a skill talent? Do you go lineman? Do you maybe go defense and go edge defender, something like that? I focus on offense for this one. And quite honestly, I I was juggling between a few guys because there's a few top end offensive linemen. And that's where I ultimately ended up going with this pick. I felt like I kept coming back to Evan Neal from Alabama. First off, the ability for him to play at a handful of positions on the offensive line was the first. That's like one of the first boxes I always look to check when I'm looking at linemen and draft classes is how many positions have they played? Or like, does their playing ability allow them to maybe swap from like tackle to guard if they need to? And so, and like so on and so forth. 
He has played left tackle. He has played right tackle. He has played left guard. You can essentially plug him in anywhere you need on the offensive line. You're probably not going to put him at center, but you can put him everywhere else. The guy is an absolute monster at 6'7", 350 pounds. His competition level is always some of the best having come from Alabama. So you know he is a battle-tested guy who has gone against some of the elite defensive line talent that is going to be playing with him in the NFL as well. And he plays and, and, and he's praised for his balance, essentially, in both the pass and the run game. He is a really good pass protector. He's a really good run blocker. Uh, would I say he's excellent at either? N- depends on who you talk to. Again, I, I think he's very well balanced. And that's what you want to look for in a premier tackle, if that's what you're going to bring him in for, or if you kick him inside. But I'm assuming Evan Neal plays tackle. And especially since he played fairly well at left tackle in college that final season, you maybe you're one going to at least try to keep him there and see if he can be your premier left tackle to block the blind side of Davis Mills. Now, a couple of cons to his game that have been noted and I found in multiple places. Balance is an issue. The guy is 6'7", 350. He gets a little top heavy at times. If he can figure out how to center his weight a little bit more and maybe have to, it's, it's for him being so big, he's going to have to focus on maybe getting a little bit lower in some of his sets. That might help him out, but that is something that's going to need to need some sort of figuring out and hopefully the offense of line coach and Houston can sort that out with him and he also does tend to get fooled by stunts and his reaction time to those are not necessarily the best but those are like the two biggest knocks to his game which helping him identify stunts and and helping him identify that he's being set up for those things is again another coaching thing that will come on to the come come from the offensive line coaching over there and will be something that they're going to need to show him how to address and how to essentially decipher and figure out but That is who I would like to see the Houston Texans go after with their first three picks in the NFL draft, barring any trades, of course. Maybe they move around. That's obviously a possibility, but I'm not going to sit here and guess out and act like I know what potential trades are going to happen in this year's draft. Those are my picks should they stay put and select the guy. My Texans fans, let me know who you think they should go after. Again, in the comment section down below. I appreciate you all for watching. I will catch you guys in the next draft preview. Have a good one.